friend, we have officially had our first snow and it is cold around here. So we are gonna be making soup for dinner tonight. And I've got a few soup recipes that we're gonna be making. I'm not sure what order we're gonna make these soups in. So I'll put timestamps down below, but winter has arrived. And so it is soup season. The first soup we're gonna start with is a creamy tomato tortellini soup, which I've never had before. And it sounds absolutely divine. When I saw that recipe, come through my <laughs> internet searches, I thought that is going to be on the menu for tonight. I've had a busy day in the kitchen today and we need a yummy, delicious, comforting meal. So I just put a half pound of ground Italian sausage in our Dutch oven. I am cutting this recipe in half and I will link all the recipes we're gonna make down in the description box. So we're gonna brown this sausage the next thing I'm gonna get going on is the mirepoix or carrots, onions, and celery. Plus I'm gonna go ahead and slice up a little bit of onion as well. I did decide to go ahead and put that other half a pound of Italian sausage in my Dutch oven because I figured what was I gonna do with half a pound of raw Italian sausage in my refrigerator at some point, I was gonna to need to cook it. So instead of putting it into the refrigerator raw, I'm gonna go ahead and cook it up. I'll pull half of it out because we only need a half a pound for tonight's dinner. And then I can freeze the cooked Italian sausage. So say next time I need to make pizza or something like that, I'll have cooked Italian sausage. I also went ahead and washed more celery than we need for tonight's dinner. And I'm gonna go ahead and dice up all the celery I have because it needs to be used. And we're not gonna use all of it today, but that way I know that we'll use it later. I'm gonna freeze a bunch of it so that it's ready for use next time. I've already used all the celery from the garden. And I love having pre-diced celery in the freezer and I don't have any right now. And then some I'll stick into the fridge that we'll use later in the week. So there are onions. The soups we're gonna be making this week are the tortellini, the one we're making tonight. And then we're gonna make chicken and dumplings with big fluffy dumplings that is absolutely comforting and delicious for this time of year. An African peanut soup with sweet potatoes that is a soup that I haven't made in probably 15 years and it is so delicious. We are gonna make a Panera copycat cheddar broccoli and a orzo chicken and lemon dill soup. So if you want any of these recipes to skip right to it, the timestamps will be linked down below. So I'm gonna remove half of this and save it for another night. You can see that really beautiful brown color. That's what we want. I'm gonna get about half of this grease out of this pan and then we can add our veggies. One of my favorite ways to get up excess grease from a pan like this is to use a paper towel and then I can just toss the paper towel away. And now we're gonna get our mirepoix into the Dutch oven. While this is starting to cook, I can go ahead and I'm gonna turn the, oh, throw in carrots. I'm gonna go ahead and get going on chopping some fresh garlic. I read one of your comments when I was harvesting things out of the garden that you like to take onion, celery, and carrot, chop it up, and freeze that together so that you can make soups really, really quickly. I think that's brilliant, and I will probably be doing that next growing season. I figured while I was at it, I might as well go ahead and chop and peel this whole head of garlic. So next time I need garlic in the week, I don't have to do this part. Now we don't have to worry about chopping garlic anytime soon. Now that our garlic has sauteed, I'm gonna add about three ounces of tomato paste. Those are some homegrown tomato paste pucks. And I'm assuming about one of those is one ounces. We're gonna have that tomato paste melt and kind of caramelize a little bit. I think I'm gonna go ahead at the same time, I'm gonna add the white wine. So that can cook and kind of help thaw that tomato paste. Our wine has evaporated and our tomato paste has caramelized. The recipe calls for Italian seasoning. I don't have Italian seasoning per se. I've got all the herbs that make up Italian seasoning. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put some parsley, 
oregano and some basil from the garden in here. And I like to kind of crush them up a little bit as I add them. And then the other ingredient it calls for is fennel seed, which I do have, which is perfect. So I'm just gonna toast the spice, the fennel and the herbs just a little bit, and then we can get going. It already smells so incredible. I've never made a soup like this before. And I can get these herbs put back. Now I'm gonna sprinkle in some flour. I'm not worried that there's some browning on the bottom because that's not burnt, that's nice brown color. I'm gonna use my homemade broth to deglaze the bottom of the pan. I'm gonna go ahead and put my lid on and let it simmer for about 15 minutes. So this has been simmering for a good 15 minutes. So what we're gonna do now is add our tortellinis. And the recipe calls for fresh. I don't have fresh, these are some frozen ones. They were fresh, I got them at Costco, but then I didn't use them in time, so I needed to freeze them. And I think these are gonna work just fine. We're gonna let this cook together for a few minutes until they're cooked through. And then I just realized I have not seasoned this with any salt yet. So we're gonna go ahead and get that seasoned. And then I'm gonna put the lid back on and let this cook all the way through. This is coming together so incredibly quickly. We're just gonna add the last few things, which is some cream and some fresh spinach. I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of this bag in here just cause I need to use it up. Look how beautiful that is. So we're gonna get the cream mixed in and the spinach mixed in. We're gonna let that simmer for just a minute and then dinner is done. I did go ahead and add a few red pepper flakes because I thought that that would be a good addition and this is what dinner is looking like. So we're gonna top our Soup with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. All right, friend, it's been a long day. It is snowing out there like crazy, and I am excited to dig into dinner. That is fantastic. I love that the base is a combination of a, it's kind of like a pink sauce, which for me and Josh, that's our favorite kind of pasta sauce and it's not too brothy. We prefer a soup to be a little bit on the thicker side, so it's kind of a cross between a pasta and a soup, and it is so delicious. The spinach adds a nice brightness, a little bit of heat with the red pepper flake, but the creaminess, so good. So I'm gonna call Josh in. He's been working outside in the snow, and he deserves a nice warm cup or bowl of soup. So I'll see you next time we make a soup. I'm really excited about the recipes that I'm gonna be making this week. Mm -hmm. Gone from snowy and whimsical to pouring and dreary. So I'm gonna go ahead and get in my pot some chicken thighs and chicken breasts. We are gonna make chicken and dumplings tonight for dinner, but not the flat dumplings. We're gonna make the nice pillowy puffy ones. And this just sounds so delicious and cozy. I've never had the dumplings when I make dumplings this way to turn out nice and puffy and pillowy. So I'm excited to see if we can do that today. One thing I should have prepped a few more of yesterday was carrots. So I'm gonna take a second and chop up an onion and some carrots while this browns. And we've got some salt in there. So we're gonna let this just cook here while I do some veggie chopping. Our chicken is nice and cooked, so now we can add the rest of the ingredients, which is a little bit of butter or a lot of butter. We're gonna use that to make our roux. I don't wanna add the garlic next. I'm gonna add some of the celery that we processed yesterday. I'm just gonna eyeball this. Some carrots I just chopped up. And I'm just gonna saute this until that butter melts. I almost forgot onions and at this point I'm not gonna chop any so I'm gonna use some of my frozen onions and we're gonna saute those down. So 
So the recipe that I'm following, I'm mostly just follow, following it for the dumpling recipe. And so it calls for a bunch of herbs. I like my chicken soups and things to be a little bit more just chicken flavored and not a bunch of herbs. So I'm gonna keep that out, but I did just add a bunch of garlic. And now I'm gonna add some flour and we're gonna cook that for a minute and then we will go ahead and get the broth in. And then I'm just gonna let this cook and kind of tenderize the meat, tenderize the veggies, and then we'll make the dumplings. Something interesting this recipe says though is to put just a teaspoon of hot sauce in it, which I think sounds really good, and some Worcestershire sauce, which I have never seen in anything chicken-based, really, I don't think. So I think that's gonna be really good. And it looks like it's time to add our broth. And I'm gonna have that broth scrape up any of the brown bits. And then I'm gonna put the lid on this and just let this simmer until it becomes really nice and stew-like. I am gonna add peas, but I'm gonna add peas once this simmers because I don't want my peas to get overcooked. Now I'm gonna add my peas. Those are just some frozen peas. It smells so amazing in here and the cream. I'm gonna turn the stove down just a touch while we make the dumplings. Actually, I wanna keep it up because I want it boiling when we add the dumplings. I've got all the ingredients out we need to make the dumplings. And here's to hoping we can get a fluffy dumpling, not a dense dumpling. So here's to hoping we can do that. Now, the recipe does call for cake flour, but I don't have cake flour. And in the notes, it says you can use all purpose. So that's what I have. I have all purpose, sugar, baking soda, and baking powder. I'm gonna mix that together with some salt. And we're supposed to, oh, and some garlic powder. And we're just supposed to mix this together until nice and well combined because once we add our wet ingredients, we're supposed to just barely fold it together. So here I'm gonna add three fourths cup sour cream, which I've never seen in a dumpling recipe before. So I think that is interesting. So we're gonna get that in here along with some melted butter and a quarter cup of milk. Now we're just gonna fold this together. It probably would have been good for me to mix the sour cream, the milk, and the butter together before adding it. Here's the consistency. It's a little drier than I would expect it to be, but that's what we're gonna go with. And then I'm gonna use a cookie scoop. This is almost like biscuit dough batter, is what I would think. But like I said, I've never had dumplings turn out well, so I'm hoping that this might be the key that I was going for the wrong consistency. I wanna turn that up a little bit. I wanna make sure it's nice and hot to cook these dough balls. I'm trying not to compact them too much, so hopefully they hold their shape. Once I get all the dumplings in here, I'm gonna put the lid back on and I'm gonna let this simmer for 12 to 15 minutes. And that is what is going to fluff up these dumplings and get them cooked all the way through. Could not have been better timing. I just heard Josh pull up and my timer went off. So we get to give these dumplings a try and see if I was successful. Wow, they really plumped up quite a bit. I'm gonna get a little bit of the sauce as well. The million dollar question, are these gummy or fluffy? I'm just gonna cut one totally in half so we can look inside. Oh, friend. I think we did it. That looks fluffy and fully cooked. It does not look gummy to me. 
that looks fully cooked and kind of dry. When I've made these in the past before, they almost look wet on the inside and they're just dense as can be. Oh my goodness. So I'm gonna give the dumpling a try first because that's the part that I've always wanted to be able to master. Growing up, we used to go out to eat to this place called JJ Norris. It was a buffet. <laughs> we would go there after church on Sundays and they had these huge chicken and dumplings. My mom never made chicken and dumplings growing up and so when we'd go there, I would always get them. And I've kind of thought about them ever since. Okay, I think I found my go-to dumpling recipe. That is so delicious. I really like the garlic added. I love garlic, but I might try it next time without the garlic. But the texture on that, perfect. I'm so excited for dinner. It has been a very long day in the kitchen. Josh just got home. So we are gonna sit down, enjoy this on this really rainy kind of gloomy day. And we'll see you next time we are in the kitchen making a cozy winter soup. Friend, this next soup we're making is a soup that I have thought about since high school. Randomly, my friend, I used to do a lot of cooking with my friends growing up and randomly my friend came over and she said that this was one of her family favorites and we made it for dinner. And I used to make it when I was in high school all the time and I haven't made it in years. And when I was looking at recipes for soups, I stumbled upon this recipe because I had lost it somehow in the years and I couldn't remember exactly how it was made. And this is very similar. It's not exact, but it's very similar to the one that I made used to make in high school that my friend introduced me to. So we're gonna first saute up some onions with some oil. While that's sauteing, I'm going to slice up a jalapeno and a sweet potato. So this is an African peanut soup. And I remember when she brought the recipe over and we started making it, I was like, I am not so sure about that because it has sweet potatoes, black beans, peanut butter, tomato sauce, ginger, and I just remember thinking, I don't know, I've never had all those flavors together, and it is so delicious, and so I'm excited to be making it today with you all. So I am just dicing up one sweet potato. Figured I might as well get those onions sauteing first. This knife just slides through the sweet potato like butter. And I am going to, I think, remove the seeds and ribs from just half of this jalapeno. And then I'll leave the seeds and ribs in the other half. To my onion, I'm gonna add some tomato paste, a little knob of ginger, and our jalapeno. This is already smelling incredible. To this, I wanna go ahead and add the cumin so that it can toast with that little bit of oil that's in there. And while that's toasting, I'm gonna go ahead and open two jars of black beans and get these drained. And then while I'm opening jars, I'm gonna open my chicken broth here and some tomato sauce. These are the black beans we grew in the garden this year. My spices are toasted, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my tomato sauce into the pot, along with my broth. And my sweet potatoes. Turn this up on a little bit higher heat. Get our beans in there. I have not seasoned this yet with any salt or pepper. I'm gonna go a little bit light on this pepper just to make sure it's not too spicy with that jalapeno. And now some salt. Stir that together. I 
I think it looks so beautiful with the orange and the green. I'm gonna get the lid on this and we're gonna let this simmer and let those potatoes soften. The recipe that I found online calls for chickpeas. Well, the one that we made in high school, I don't remember there being chickpeas. So I just put two cans of black beans instead and I don't have chickpeas anyway, so it worked out perfect. And this recipe also calls for kale, which I don't remember putting kale or spinach or anything in it. I just remember having it like this. We still need to add one more ingredient, but I want the sweet potatoes to get soft before we add one more ingredient. I should probably taste this for seasoning like salt because I could adjust that right now. I did measure out some peanut butter. You want to use a natural peanut butter with this. You don't want to use a peanut butter that has a ton of sugar in it. Oh yeah, that's delicious already. Okay, we're gonna let that just cook away. The soup has been simmering away for about a half an hour now. The sweet potatoes are tender, so we're gonna get our peanut butter in here. We're gonna mix that up. I didn't want the peanut butter to burn while it was simmering with the sweet potatoes. So that's gonna take a minute for that to dissolve and melt in there. Well, that's doing that. I'd run out to the garden and I harvested some cilantro. I think this is about the last of the cilantro from the garden. We've gotten some snow and I think we're about at its ending point for the season. And then I also grabbed some green onions. This is gonna add some nice freshness. I have some peanuts. I think I'm gonna chop a few of these up too and we can use these as garnish for a nice little crunch on the top. In just a few minutes, as that peanut butter dissolved, you can see how much it thickened up this soup and it almost becomes like a stew. I'm gonna give this a quick taste tester. We're not quite ready for dinner yet, but I wanna give this a try. I'm gonna to top the soup with a little bit of cilantro, green onion, and some peanuts. See if it's like I remember. Now this recipe called for chicken. The recipe I made in high school was a vegetarian recipe, minus the chicken broth, and so I decided not to add chicken today but if you wanted a protein in this, chicken would be delicious. Mm hmm That's really good. It's so different. It's not like a typical soup. It's not like a ch chili. The sweet potatoes and the peanut butter just add something totally different. And it's so good with the black beans. I really <laughs> like this soup. So I'm excited that I found this recipe and I can kind of make it again. So this is delicious. I am going to enjoy this with Josh. I will see you next time we are gonna make a soup. This next recipe is Josh's favorite soup. And we were married for, I think six or seven years before I knew this about him. So we're gonna make cheddar broccoli soup, which I think just sounds delicious. So there I've got some butter and now I'm gonna put some diced frozen onion. Woo, that's way more than we need. Into the pot. I'm gonna cut this recipe in half. So it's gonna be a lunch portion today. We're gonna to let this saute for a few minutes. To our onions and butter, I'm gonna add some shredded carrots that I shredded up from the garden that were frozen. So this is gonna to come together really quickly because a lot of these vegetables I already had prepped. I do wanna season this with some pepper and salt. Our veggies are soft, so I'm gonna add some chicken broth. I have found that frozen onions cook up so quickly. To this, we're gonna add our chopped broccoli. Some of it I chopped really, really small. Some I left a little bit bigger so that we can have kind of a variety of sizes of broccoli in our soup. I 
I got a little ahead of myself and I forgot to add the flour because we want to make this kind of a creamy soup and the flour is going to help thicken it up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I just took the flour that I need and I just added a little bit of milk, which we're going to add milk to this in just a minute. And I'm going to whisk that flour and milk together so that there's no lumps. What I should have done is put this flour in after the butter, before the broth, but we'll be able to adapt and overcome. I'm now gonna add this to our soup. And the soup, as this cooks, will cook that flour and we won't have the raw flour taste. It's already actually thickening up just a little bit there, just from that already. I'm gonna go ahead and add the seasonings while this is cooking here. I'm gonna add some garlic powder and some mustard powder. You're not gonna actually taste the mustard, it's just gonna help bring out the cheese flavor. Mix that together. This soup comes together so quickly, it could even be a side for a dinner or it can be the main dish. The broccoli is almost tender, so we're gonna add our milk next and our heavy cream. I'm gonna put the lid on and I'm gonna let this simmer. We're gonna add just a little bit of sugar, our soup, has been simmering for about 15 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and add what makes this broccoli cheddar soup and add some cheddar. This is white cheddar, because that's what I have, but you could certainly use an orange cheddar if you want that more traditional orange cheddar look for broccoli cheddar soup. We're gonna let this melt and kind of come together, and then we're gonna give this a taste test. It smells incredible. In a matter of no time, Dinner is done and we can give this a try. See if we need to add any more cheese or salt or pepper. If this is not perfect for a cold winter day, I don't know what is when, well I haven't been there in years, but when we would go to Panera when we were growing up, a bowl of this in a bread bowl, delicious. So let's see if this rivals Panera Bread's broccoli cheddar soup. Even better. So good, creamy, delicious. There's still a little bit of crunch to the broccoli. I didn't overcook it. The only thing that took me any time at all was washing and chopping the broccoli because I just chopped it up real small. It went really quick. If you had frozen broccoli, this would come together even quicker. This came together so fast. Like I said, this could be a side or a main dish. So good. Mm. Cheese and broccoli. Perfect combination. This next recipe we're gonna make sounds absolutely delicious. And this once again is coming together in a matter of minutes. It would come together quicker if I had rotisserie chicken. That's what this recipe calls for. I don't have that, but what I do have are some chicken thighs that I can cook up real quick. So this is gonna take the longest part, but if I had rotisserie chicken, that's what the recipe calls for and that's what we could use. We're gonna make a lemon orzo rotisserie chicken soup. So I'm gonna go ahead and season these with some salt and pepper. And while this is cooking, we're gonna chop up our one vegetable we need to chop for this soup. The oil I used for this is a garlic infused oil, so that's gonna have some yummy garlic flavor as well. What intrigued me about this recipe is we are gonna actually put eggs in it to kind of creamify, I don't know if that's a word, but to add a level of richness to the soup which is something I've never added to a soup before, so I'm excited to see what this is gonna taste like. And here I have some shallot. If you don't have shallots, you could use red onion for this. I'm just gonna go ahead and peel this shallot. I love shallots. I think they have a nice sweet onion flavor. I 
think I chopped a little more shallots than I need for this recipe, so I'm going to put half of it in this bowl and I'll use that for something else. My chicken is nicely cooked now, so I'm just going to go ahead and get my shallots into the pot. And then I'm going to go ahead and chop up three cloves of garlic. I have my garlic chopped and now we're going to get our egg prepared so we can put it in the soup when it's ready. Now, real lemon juice would be the best in this, but I don't have any. I thought I did. So we're just gonna use some nice high quality bottled lemon juice, that's why I keep it on hand. And we're gonna mix the lemon and egg together. Oop, I'm spilling a little bit, that's okay. And we're gonna set this aside while we do the rest of the ingredients for the soup. Our chicken is fully cooked, so are our shallots. I'm gonna add the garlic. Cook this for a minute. Now I'm gonna add some chicken broth. I think I need to go grab a little bit more chicken broth. I'm gonna use that broth to scrape up any of the brown bits on the bottom of the pot. Got a half cup of orzo, and I have some dill. That's some freeze-dried dill. Fresh would be best, but this is what I have. Oh, that smells incredible. I can already smell it. Freeze-dried herbs just smell just like fresh. Okay, I'm gonna put the lid on and let this simmer away. When making a soup this simple, starting out with a really good quality broth is the key because there's not very many ingredients in this. The rest, the only thing we have to do is temper the egg in this and that's gonna give us our creaminess we want out of the soup without adding cream. And so that's why I love having homemade broth on hand. One, it's pennies on the dollar if you make it homemade. I can it so it sits on my pantry shelf or I could keep it in my freezer and I could have the highest quality broth for pennies on the dollar and I can have a delicious soup with not as much effort if I have it pre-made broth in the freezer or on my pantry shelf. And the flavor is just gonna be just that much better because there's not very many ingredients in this, so you wanna make sure each of the ingredients is the highest quality possible. I went ahead and added my egg and lemon juice to a bigger bowl because we need to temper this so we don't scramble the eggs. And that little bowl wasn't gonna be big enough. So I'm gonna take my really hot broth and I'm gonna mix it in with this egg so that we can slowly bring up the egg temperature without scrambling it. Okay, once this is nice and hot, it's steaming, I then can pour it into our pot, slowly mixing, as to not scramble the egg still. Oh my goodness, see how creamy that looks now? It's lightened up the color just like it would if we had added cream. And now we're gonna put the lid on and let the orzo finish cooking and that thicken up a little bit. The orzo is fully cooked now, so we're gonna give this a try. The smell with the dill and chicken is just incredible. This is by far the most unique soup I have ever made. And look how creamy that looks with no cream in it whatsoever, no cheese in it whatsoever. That's just coming from the egg. I'm gonna let this cool off. To me, what this seems like would be good on a day where you're not feeling very well. It's very light, there's not a ton of veggies in it. And so I think it would just be really soothing with, you know, if you're just not feeling up to it, it just seems like it would be comforting in that way. Mmm, wow. You can taste the lemon, but just a hint of it, I didn't add too much. The egg really makes this feel super velvety and delicious. This is incredible. This is so simple, so light, so easy to make. Oh my goodness. It has such strong chicken flavor because we use that homemade chicken stock 
and the chicken, it really shines through. I do think that that would be a perfect under the weather soup and it was so easy. So if you weren't feeling well, you could whip it together really quickly. That's one thing I've really been enjoying these kind of themed dinners of the week because it's really pushing me out of my comfort zone. Josh and I don't eat a ton of soup. The black bean, African potato soup, Oh my goodness, I've had that for lunch two days in a row. It is so good. All the soups we made were just incredible. So it's kind of fun because it's pushing me out of the comfort zone. I will absolutely make this again. And it's just kind of opening my eyes to different recipes that I'm not used to cooking. So friend, if you enjoyed this, let me pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. The recipes will be linked in the description box below. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.